Hi again. We're going to look today at birth trauma and a number of definitions around birth trauma. And that's just so that as we go along this journey together that we have a similar language and a way of pulling things out so that we can look at them more clearly as we go along. Um, the first thing I would like to emphasise is that the number of definitions describes various ways that trauma can affect a mother and her baby. And two of these include the physical and the neurological damage that can occur to the baby and or to the mum during the pressures of the birth. And one definition relates to the psychological changes that occur due to fear in the birth process. And that that's important language as all injuries carry a cost and each definition acknowledges that trauma, whether physical or psychological, um, carries invisible factors with it. So the definition of birth trauma in the infant, for instance, encompasses enduring side effects um, of both physical and neurological birth injuries that an infant may sustain in their journey. And a way of describing that, for instance, is um, a baby might sustain a fractured clavicle due to a difficult delivery of the shoulders of birth. And that would be called a birth injury. And while the birth injury includes um, this part of this story, it also includes the continuation of these side effects as the baby grows. So any mechanical damage that might happen or, and or the healing process and the positive effects of that. Maternal injuries are trauma which result um, in the pregnancy and include physically visible and invisible injuries and they can occur during the pregnancy itself or during the birth experience or even postnatally. So that leads us to um, psychological birth trauma and I'm looking at the the definition on the Birth Trauma Association UK website because um, it's inclusive and because the website itself is just fantastic. And the birth trauma definition um, of psychological birth trauma is a shorthand phrase for post-traumatic stress disorder that occurs after childbirth. And so we also use that um, for women um, who have some symptoms of PTSD, but not enough symptoms for a full diagnosis of PTSD. And that's my experience a lot of the time, or most of the time, where um, there are some symptoms that cause a lot of distress. And that would be post-traumatic stress symptoms rather than PTSD. There are five women on the Birth Trauma Association website UK, which um, they're in which they're telling their stories, and not everybody gets the chance to listen to real life people, and I'm very grateful to them because they're very honest and very open, and obviously very affected um, in a psychological way um, through their experiences and. It's quite a thing to offer that to the community and help other people understand what they've been through. And so they're all different stories and they've all a variety of variation in in the the cost to them personally. And I think that's a, an educational thing to do and would be helpful. Um, OK, so we're going to leave this at this point today. Um, there will be notes. I'll follow them through for a blog on all of these parts. And um, please follow that at Afterthoughts NI and subscribe, press the notification button if you like. In the next video, I'm going to look at what birth trauma isn't. Because I think that's important too, because um, it can be quite costly, uh, this whole journey of having a baby and um, it's important to know what it, what defines things and what doesn't. And so that's a good, 
a good thing to look at. And the video following that will look at the individual symptoms that PTSD um, mean, what, what they are and what they mean, and give some insight into how that might affect a person who has them postnatally. Okay, see you then. Thank you.